Municipal violations. They're the small, everyday ways of breaking the law, like speeding or trespassing, or, and this is true, failing to vaccinate your ferret. That is actually against the law, so sorry, ferret Jenny McCarthy, you're just gonna have to get it done. <laughs> the point is, we have all committed municipal violations, and if you've never gotten a ticket for one, all I can say is congratulations on not getting caught. Now, for most people, tickets are just annoying. We grin and bear them, or, as in the case of this young woman, throw a passive-aggressive tantrum. Citation is for... I know, my headlights weren't on, yada, yada, yada. Yes, you're right. But citations for not having your headlights on. Take care of this ticket on before the third... Oh, hold on, but let me explain it, okay? I like, to... I totally get it. Like, it's a ticket, I need to pay it, I'm late. <sighs> You just know that woman behaves that way in every situation. <laughs> yeah, I totally get it. It's a funeral. Mindy was a person. Now she's going to be, like, eaten by worms. Just, just put her in the ground so I can get to Soul Cycle. I'm late. <laughs> God. God. Now, 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 she's probably not thought about that ticket until, I'm guessing, round about now, <laughs> when she's getting a lot of text messages from friends saying, Amber, you're totally on HBO right now, <laughs> shouting at a cop. But, but if you don't have enough money to pay a fine immediately, tickets can wreck your life. Let me introduce you to a woman named Harriet Cleveland. She had some low-level traffic tickets, but because she couldn't pay them straight away, she accumulated all kinds of other fees and additional tickets, which, despite her best efforts, she was unable to pay off. And then, one morning, this happened. I had my grandbaby with me, and I was sitting up giving him breakfast that morning, and I heard a knock on the door, and I seen a police officer at my door. And in the back of my mind, it wasn't for me because I didn't figure they'd come get you for tickets. I was escorted to jail. And if you're thinking, how the f is it possible for a grandmother to go to jail for traffic tickets, well, that is what this story is about. Because let's start at the beginning. Most tickets come with a fine, and if you've ever lived paycheck to paycheck, you know that can be difficult. For example, in DeKalb County, Alabama, a speeding ticket is $255.50. If you earn minimum wage there, $7.25 an hour, it would take you more than 35 hours of work to pay that off. Which seems harsh, because the only justifiable way you should lose an entire week of your life due to speeding is if you hit 88 miles an hour and go back in time. <laughs> and, and sometimes, governments will take a reasonable base fine and turn it into something that people may not be able to afford, as they've done in California. The actual fine for running a stop sign is $35, but by the time the state tacks on 10 different surcharges and fees, the amount you owe jumps to $238. Now, just to put that in perspective, I went on eBay this morning and $238 is the current asking price for this glorious unicorn with wheels on its hooves. So that's right. If you live in California and run a stop sign, you can either pay your ticket or own a unicorn. <laughs> now, now, courts know that not everyone can pay fines straight away, which is why some allow a payment plan. Unfortunately, that can turn out to be even more expensive. In Illinois, the state adds on 30% if you fall behind in your payments. In New Orleans, it costs you 100 bucks just to sign up for a payment plan. Yes, your payment plan begins with a payment plan payment. <laughs> it's like your probation officer is MC Escher. Just, <laughs> just go pay the clerk at the top of that endless staircase. You'll be fine. And this situation is widespread. At least 44 states charge people a fee to be on probation, and many municipalities use these charges as a way to fund local services without raising taxes. And if that rings a bell at all to you, it may be because of Ferguson, Missouri. Because when the recent Department of Justice report uncovered institutional racism, it found one of the ways it manifested was in the use of fines as a cash machine. The report says officers competed to see who could write the most tickets. It also concludes police officers' promotions depended on citation revenue. Then there's the story of a police commander who one day bragged to his superiors about seeing a steady stream of people, 10 to 15 deep, waiting in line for hours to pay traffic fines. He wrote, the court clerk girls have been swamped. And the city manager responded, great work. Okay, <laughs> setting aside the fact that he used the phrase court clerk girls. <laughs> that situation is ridiculous. The only people who should be that excited about people waiting in line to hand over way too much money are Apple executives. <laughs> That's the only time. And, and if you couldn't pay immediately in Ferguson, they could bleed you dry. Listen to just one example. In 2007, 
One woman received two parking tickets that together totaled $152. To date, she has paid $550 in fines and fees to the city of Ferguson. Yet today, she still inexplicably owes Ferguson $541. That's more than $1,000 for $150 in tickets. Even people stocking hotel minibars are thinking, that markup seems a little high. <laughs> Just settle down. And the thing is, using fines to fund government was not happening just in Ferguson, as a recent study of the surrounding area showed. According to court records, eight towns rely on court fines and fees for more than 30% of their revenue. Calverton Park is at the 66% level. 66%? When that much of your budget comes from fines, you're actually rooting for people to break the law. <laughs> Listen, everyone, we're gonna have to close the library unless someone urinates up that wall <laughs> and the rest of us start driving like maniacs. So put the pedal to the metal, let's do it for the kids. <laughs> and, and the problem is, in these situations, the poor get hurt the worst. In many states, failure to pay a fine on time can even result in having your driving license suspended. In fact, this is such a common practice that in Orange County, Florida, they even made an event out of it. The Grinch himself showed up in Orange County with a bag full of licenses belonging to drivers who've been more naughty than nice. We're sending the message that if you're going to come out here and you're going to drive in a manner that affects somebody else's life or safety, that we're going to impact your life. OK, OK. First of all, you do know the Grinch is the bad guy in that story, right? <laughs> it's not about a brave green crime fighter who saves Whoville from a guy driving his sleigh 10 miles over the speed limit. <laughs> but, but secondly, the Grinch's argument that this was all about affecting people's lives and safety was somewhat undercut a little later in the same report. Many of these licenses were suspended simply because the drivers didn't pay a traffic ticket. Exactly. Those licenses weren't all taken from reckless drivers. The odds are they were mostly taken from insolvent drivers. In 2012 in Florida, a staggering 88% of all license suspensions were due to failure to comply with summons or fines, which is insane. It also leaves only 12% for Florida's other most common violations, accidentally taking your golf cart on the freeway, <laughs> feeding meth to an alligator, <laughs> feeding an alligator to a meth dealer, <laughs> and being an alligator meth dealer. <laughs> Florida. The problem is... The problem is... If you do lose your licence, it can affect everything. Most Americans drive to work. And if you can't do that, you've got a problem. In New Jersey, a survey of low-income drivers who'd had their licence suspended found that 64% had lost their jobs as a result, which doesn't help anyone. You need them to pay their fine, but you're taking away their means of paying it. That's the most self-defeating idea since gay conversion camp. Hey, <laughs> don't worry, boys, we'll fix you. It's swimming in the morning, wrestling in the afternoon, and in the evening, general horseplay in the woods. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine, chaps. So, let's, let's recap. If you get a ticket and you can't pay it, you may get additional fines, lose your licence and eventually your job. And if you're thinking, is there any way this whole situation can be made even worse, relax, there is. <laughs> because now private companies have somehow managed to insert themselves. Private probation companies across the US supervise people who are on probation for minor offences, collect all of their outstanding debts and fines and court costs, and they won't charge the courts a penny. Instead, probationers pay them fees in exchange for their services. Yes, companies like Judicial Correction Services and Sentinel Offender Services offer to supervise probationers and collect fees on the court's behalf at no cost. They even market themselves with ads like this one for JCS, trumpeting the millions of dollars they collect for municipalities. The problem is, that money is a lot like Wendy's chili. It's fantastic to have, just as long as you don't think about where it came from. <laughs> because... It can come from people like Haley Woods. August of last year, I got a no seatbelt ticket. How much was that ticket for? It was, the ticket was $25 and court cost was 16, which was 41. And then I, had, I didn't have the money to pay, so they uh, put me on JCS probation. That's right, Haley was handed over to JCS probation because she couldn't pay a $41 ticket. 
they put her on a payment plan with a monthly fee of $35. The problem for Haley was any money she sent in was applied to her JCS fees first and not her $41 ticket, which put her in a hamster wheel of hell. And this one right here shows I paid another $10. Shows that the fees went down, but the fine is still $41. I've told the judge that I had the money to pay for the ticket and I couldn't afford the rest of the fees and he said that that wasn't his problem, that I could just put that $41 towards the probation. And then I got another one that shows I paid $41 even and the fine has not been touched, not one time, all the money I've paid. Wow. So if you have money, the state slogan is click it or ticket. But if you don't, it should really be buckle yourself or go fuckle yourself. <laughs> and in case, in case you are somehow not angry enough by now, just remember how this system works if you do have money. I know, my headlights weren't on, yada, yada, yada. Let me explain it, okay? I like, to... I totally get it. Like, it's a ticket, I need to pay it, I'm late. You didn't think it was possible to dislike her anymore, did you? <laughs> Amber, you're back on TV. This is sick. <laughs> and, and it's not just that these private probation companies can take your money. Their recommendations to the court can ultimately send you to jail. Take the case of Tom Barrett. He's a veteran who stole a $2 can of beer, which he knows he should not have done. And when he couldn't pay his fine, he was referred to Sentinel Offender Services. Now, in addition to all their other fees, they gave Tom a court-ordered leg monitor for which they charged him $360 a month, $12 a day. To keep up on his payments, he had to start selling his own plasma. And where do you think this story ended? I ended up having to walk everywhere because I didn't... I couldn't afford bus fare. Um, I went hungry because I couldn't afford food. It was $12 a day, and there was no way I could make $12 a day, so I was always falling behind. So I ended up getting locked up three times over stealing this can of beer. Locked up three times over stealing one can of beer. That is not justice. That's the plot of a southern Les Miserable. <laughs> I dreamed a dream. I stole a course. <laughs> and then some assholes put me in jail. <laughs> the, the crazy thing is, the most insane part of this is, the main reason municipalities sign contracts with these companies is to save money. And yet, this whole system doesn't even make sense on a financial basis. Because as Tom Barrett's lawyer explains, locking him up was expensive. I know the jailing cost $50 a day, and I think he was probably in jail for at least 60 days or 70 days, so probably over $3,500. So just think about that. A $2 can of beer caused a $270 fine, which the city spent over $3,000 to try and enforce. But you know what? It's like they say, you've got to spend money to make money <laughs> to be able to afford to jail people to lose money. That's the system, right? <laughs> and, and all this brings us right back to where we began with Harriet Cleveland. Because her story touches on pretty much everything we've seen so far. How did Harriet wind up in jail? Well, she struggled to pay traffic tickets, had her license suspended, had to keep driving or she'd lose her job, was then caught driving without a license, ticketed again, and then had her fines handed over to the good people at JCS. And I'll let her pick up the story from there. I just really lost a whole lot of money paying to them. That didn't go on to my fine. I lost my car trying to pay them. I did a title loan on my car and lost that. And trying to pay my utility bills, you know, and they getting shut off here and there. Well, I wanted to pay my fine. But I can't afford it. And like I said, it just hurt my heart. And I didn't even have that tape. But I had to take something. Until it got to a point I just got tired. And I couldn't take anything anymore. I paid him $2,000 one time when I got my income tax. And then that was in February. And in March, I just didn't have anything else to give him. That is awful. Now, the Southern Poverty Law Center eventually managed to get her out of jail after 10 days, arguing that she'd been sent to what was effectively a debtor's prison, something that was supposed to have been fucking outlawed in America in the 1830s. But the truth is, 
whether through private probation or just the state, many people are being caught in the same cycle as all the people that we've seen. And let's be clear, no one is saying that people who break the law should not be punished. This isn't about being soft on crime. Listen to Tom Barrett's self-proclaimed conservative Republican lawyer. If someone violates the rules of society, they need to be punished. But the punishment need to have some, uh, if, if it's going to be based on a fine, it had to be based on the person's ability to pay. If they don't have the ability to pay, they can pick up trash on the streets or they can have some community service. I think pretty much everyone would agree with that. Not only should municipalities not be balancing their books on the backs of some of their most vulnerable citizens, but we cannot have a system where committing a minor violation can end up putting you in, and I'm going to use a legal term of art here, the f barrel. <laughs> we can't have that. And it might be time that we all stood up and said so. I'm a hostess. I'm a barista. I'm a cashier. I'm a utility inspector. I am a hairstylist. I'm a janitor and cook. We are all Americans, and we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But sometimes in that pursuit, we also need the right to f up once in a while without it completely destroying our lives. I've jaywalked before, all the time, actually. I have gotten a speeding ticket. Yeah, I mean, I've publicly urinated maybe once or twice. Public drunkenness. Of course your boy been drunk in public, baby. Got tickets for spitting on the floor. I got a ticket for petty loitering. I got arrested for smoking weed at a concert, and then I met Jizza from Wu-Tang, and he gave me a VIP pass back into the concert, so thank you, Jizza. Yes. Thank you, Jizza. And when we've truly made a mistake, we're all willing to pay a price. But that price should be reasonable, and private companies should not be profiting from someone's inability to pay. One time, I put a popsicle on my friend's ass. Okay, that doesn't really apply to what we're talking about here, but thanks for sharing. The point is, this is everyone's problem. Young, old, black, white, it's not about race. It's definitely about race. Race definitely plays plays into it for sure. I highly doubt that loitering thing I got would have happened to me if I was, forget about me being white, if I was like a couple of shades lighter. Okay, you're right. It's absolutely about race as well, but it's also about basic fairness and it has to stop because people cannot end up in the f barrel for the little stuff we all do. So it's time for us all to come together and say as one. Shut down the f barrel. 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 I said shut down the f barrel. Shut down the f barrel, please. Yes, shut down the f barrel. Shut it down.